Hey, what's up stream keepers? Uh, thank you for coming back to my channel and today I would like to talk to you about uh, you know the differences between how, how do you differentiate between a male and a female stream. I think that's a very common topic that uh, most of us actually uh, ask about when we first start in this hobby and and actually there are some very good ways to actually uh, determine and differentiate between a male and female streams. So before I, I delve in, into, into that, I uh, just wanted to you know, share with you guys uh, some of my uh, uh, routines in terms of uh, water change and, and all that. So, so I've just completed you know, uh, all the tanks uh, doing my water change. I do now, you know, depending on the amount of uh, number of streams in the tank, I usually do about 5-10% to 10 uh, of water change. And uh, so yeah, so I've done that and now uh, coming back to the video, and uh, talking about you know the, the the differences between a male and female stream and how do we uh, link that and connect that to uh, selective breeding so uh, maybe a little bit of background why this is so important is that uh, if for example if you have if you are unable to you know uh, differentiate between a male and female uh, streamlet then uh, a 0 0.8 cm or even a 1 cm streamlet that is a male could actually you know uh, crossbreed with your, your stock stream and that is not something that you you you, you want or desire in terms of uh, the selective uh, breeding process so uh, that is uh, one of the biggest I think one of the biggest key reason why you know identifying uh, between the male and female uh, is so critical and uh, although there are you know uh, different ways or different you know criteria to actually uh, differentiate male and female streams but one of the more important ones that i often use is actually uh, which i've been taught by the taiwanese as well you know uh, you know when when the streams are big it's easy to see because when the streams are big you can actually see their their, their belly and uh, if a pregnant you know a, a stream that is pregnant then you will be able to see that they carry eggs and, and all that so then it's a definitely that that's a female stream uh, however you know we we really need to uh, you know discern between male and female when they are much smaller so that uh, this gives us uh, a much uh, you know more control over a selective breeding process so what I've been taught is that uh, instead of just using you know the belly because the, when you see the belly they are rather large rather big already and uh, quite mature in terms of the age of the stream um, what we use usually is that we try to see the uh, hey, yes Jake say hello <laughs> okay yeah so coming back to the video coming back to the video close this back there and uh, so coming back to, to you know the, the differences between that is to actually see the the stream you know the stream there there is actually three feelers or three antennas uh, how you call it we actually see the two that is coming up here yes Jake do you want to be in the video <laughs> sorry for that so coming back to that is that the uh, the antennas you know the two top ones that I will show you in the picture over over you know somewhere. You know somewhere here uh, to actually see that the two top antennas those are shorter for females and longer for males so this is true uh, when they are about 0 0.8 to 1 cm already so this is where we can actually uh, start to differentiate between uh, male and female well, of course you know uh, it takes time it takes a lot of practice that uh, you learn how to differentiate between a male and female at that size right so I have actually uh, tried this method in terms of uh, I have uh, requested uh, a, a certain ratio like for example I want uh, 2 male and 8 females uh, of you know 0 0.8 to 1 cm the 1 cm kind of uh, stream uh, and and to test out whether you know uh, does the does the breeder really know uh, his uh, identification uh, and it turns out it, it, it works you know uh, so far you know all of those that is uh, male and female that I've requested are all really really uh, accurate so 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 that's where I, I, I asked and learned and being taught how do you do you differentiate that and it's it's of course uh, over time uh, as you practice more 
uh, then you'll be able to really discern them between a male and female at even a very uh, young age. So uh, one of the ways is actually to you know have a lot of uh, you can breed a lot of streams uh, and then you actually uh, from there you try to differentiate between them. Uh, for example, one of the things is that you know antennas can be long and short uh, depending on the size. So for example, if a, a stream is at one cm, both streams are at one cm, and the male will always have a longer top antenna, uh, top antenna that is at least twenty percent at the size, at least twenty percent longer. So it is a very minute, uh, uh, you know, way to actually try to to see that. Uh, between both of them you need to have very good eyesight uh, if not you can actually use a magnifying glass as well so you can actually see that uh, that the males are usually uh, longer and over time your probability of success in, in getting it right is it goes much higher and higher so uh, maybe when you are starting you get about maybe 30 percent hit rate 40 percent and in, in general normally uh, most hobbies who have been in this hobby for many many years they are able to actually uh, discern at 1 cm you know male or female uh, at at least 50 percent right or 50 or 60 percent where you're able to see the antenna and then uh, see okay that is male and that is a female so over time uh, day in day out you keep scooping streams you keep selecting streams you you will definitely start to learn and, and see the big difference between a male and female uh, at that size so uh, so that's one of the the, the top actually one of the top priorities top, top criteria that we actually use in terms of differentiating between the male and female stream uh, not so much on the belly not so much on the size not so much on the rest of the things so uh, so like I've mentioned earlier you know uh, the, the criticality of uh, differentiating between male and female is really about a uh, selective breeding so if you are able to discern between the male and female at a young age, you are able to you know separate them so that they you you are able to control uh, all the factors that is uh, that is involved in terms of the selective breeding process. So so we we really need to uh, to practice on that one because it's it's not that straightforward. It's not that easy, uh, but it's also one of the more uh, uh, accurate ways of uh, you know uh, differentiating between males and females. So, so coming to uh, some of the, 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 the risk factors in terms of or, or some of the things that may go wrong uh, when you're trying to look at those antennas is when, for example, the, the stream had got into a fight or when, when they are feeding, they, they, you know, feeding frenzy, the top antenna gets uh, broken. And that's where the challenge comes because the male will now look like a female and then uh, it, it becomes very difficult to, to know whether it is a male or female but usually if if they go uh, when, when there's a feeding frenzy and there's a fight the antennas usually uh, you'll be able to see that one is longer one is shorter so uh, for that part of it we will not uh, we will not uh, you know try to ID that so we'll just leave it alone let it mold and then uh, in future when when after the mold they will actually uh, go back to the original size of the uh, of the antennas so 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 in terms of uh, in terms of uh, differentiating male and female this is one of the aspects that uh, I've been taught and I would like to share this with you and and the why why of it because selecting selective breeding if you are unable to differentiate that then it really boils down to how are you going to really uh, you know uh, hone on your skill in terms of uh, selective breeding because when a snicker male or when a, when a male that is of a less desirable trait is able to, to breed in the, the stock stream or in terms of uh, or they are able to actually breed in the in the uh, streamlet tank or the grow up tank then it becomes you know it becomes difficult to control and when it things becomes difficult to control you then there's a difference there's a difference between selective breeding for masses and selective breeding for uh, good streams because selective breeding for masses is just selecting selective breeding so I'll take like a, a, a very good stock stream and then I keep uh, breeding them keep breeding them regardless of whether uh, I select the, the streamlets or not uh, but selective breeding for very good streams is that after you have a good stock stream there and then you start to select the good streams from the, the, the streamlet tank 
So that is a, a totally a different topic altogether, but I'll just give a, a, an overview of what it might entails and, and of course the outcome of, of it. So one is that if you are going to breed it for masses uh, through selective breeding and then breed it for masses, that is usually what we term it uh, uh, one generation nice when the, that generation is, is very nice. You know, the streams are very nice at that generation, but the future generations after being uh, bred out is not as, as solid because the, uh, the traits are not selectively bred through the, the years. Uh, so there's a difference between selective breeding for masses and selective breeding for stock stream, good streams, show quality streams. is a uh, totally different uh, areas together. And, and this comes back to the fundamentals of uh, being able to actually select the streams between a male and female at, at a size, at a small size. And having a grow-up tank would definitely uh, help you in, in the process because uh, by removing all the streamlets into another tank, you are actually controlling that factor. At least one of those factors are being controlled. So you will not be introducing uh, a, a snicker meal or something of a less desirable trait inside your stock, stock tank. So. So these are some of the things that uh, I'll be talking in, in, in one, of, uh, one of my other videos as well. Um, but I would like to share with you in this video, how do, you, how do I actually use uh, uh, the, the method of differentiating between male and female uh, from the antenna standpoint. I understand and I have uh, heard a lot of feedback that you know, it is difficult, but um, the, the truth to, to the matter of fact is that you have to practice and you have to keep looking and, and differentiating that as well. So a lot of apprenticeship uh, in Taiwan, they actually learn how to differentiate between males and females uh, when they start learning how to keep streams. So this is one of the criteria that they, they actually go through the process of you know netting streams and then uh, differentiating between male and female, male and female, uh, and then increasing their probability of success, of accuracy over a, a period of time. So. Thanks for watching and uh, you know appreciate the, the, the encouragement and the feedback so far. Uh, please keep the comments coming and if you have any videos that or any topics that you would like to, 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 to hear and learn about, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to write in the comments below. And if you like, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Peace out.